Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a surveillance camera effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. You can see a quick example of this on screen right now. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing you need to do is have Premiere Pro open and have some video on your timeline. In this case, I just have the stock footage that we're going to be editing to create a surveillance camera effect. So the first thing we're going to do is open up our effects panel. If you can't find this, simply go up to window and click on effects. What we're going to be searching for black and you use the little symbol right here. And under video effects and image control, we should have the black and white effect here. What we're going to be doing is dragging this onto our video track on our timeline. And you'll notice right away our video track will turn black. So this is the very first thing I'd recommend doing for your video surveillance footage. Of course, if your video is in color, you can keep it in color and you can skip this step. But for the most part, these things are in black and white and I think it adds a nice effect. So we're gonna be sticking in our effects control panel and what we're gonna be searching for next is the posterized time effect. Now this can be found under video effects, time and then posterized time. And this is gonna be affecting our frame rate to create a choppy surveillance camera effect. What we're gonna be doing is dragging this onto our video track. And then we're going to be coming to our effects control panel. If you can't find this, simply go up to window and click on effect controls. And that's going to open up the effects for our video clip. Make sure you have it selected on your timeline so the effects show up here. So what we have here is the posterized time effect that's just been added. And underneath this, we can see we have the frame rate option right here. Now, by default, this is going to be set to whatever the frame rate of your video is. In this case, my video is currently set to 24 frames. And you can see if I play back through this, it's currently playing back at 24 frames. But what we're going to be doing with this is actually editing how many frames per second we show to create more of a surveillance camera effect. So in this case, I'd recommend experimenting around, but I'm going to be starting with 10 frames per second and you'll instantly create a more choppy effect, which is more of what you see in surveillance cameras. So here you can experiment to see what your effect needs. In this case, I'm going to be sticking with 10 frames as it feels most natural and it gives more of a surveillance camera look. The next thing we're going to be doing is coming back to our effects again. We're going to be closing off our search bar and we're going to be searching for time code. Now this can be found under video effects, video and time code. And what we're going to be doing is dragging this effect again onto our timeline. And you can see instantly we get this time code onto our video track. And this is going to help again with our surveillance camera. So what we're going to be doing is coming back to our effects control panel. And then we're going to be looking for the new effect that we just created here, which is time code. Now what I would recommend is when you're adding extra text and extra elements like this, we would set up safe margins, which you can see I currently have on the screen right now and it's just this white border which I can enable and enable on top of my preview. You can add this to your video simply by clicking the button editor here. What you'll do is get the option to add extra buttons right below your preview. You can simply drag and drop your safe margins onto here, click OK and it will be added and then you can set this up. So what we're going to be doing is affecting and moving our time code to be in the top right corner. You can do this by coming to our effects control panel. We can then affect the position using the X and Y coordinates here just to kind of match up with the edge of the safe margin that we just set up. And here you can put it wherever you want. In this case, I like it in the top right corner, although you can put it in any position you would like as well. So we have a couple of nice effects with the time code. So the first thing we have, which we just edited is a position. The second thing we have is size, which is 15%. In this case, I'm happy with the size, although you can scale this up or down if you would like also. We then have the opacity, which is going to be the box in the background. In this case, I also think 40% is fine. But of course, if you want it full black like this, you can have that option also. We then have the field symbol option, which is just going to be this oval icon at the end. You can enable or disable this if you wish. We then have the format, time code source and time display. I'd recommend leaving all these alone. Of course, you can edit them if you wish. The format you will see will change the effect here, but I like it to be in a full time effect as it is. The time code source is going to be affected by the media, which is the video clip you have it selected on. And then the time display is 30 frames. This you can edit to match your video. In this case, my video is set to 24 frames, so we can have it set up like that. The last thing I'm going to mention is the actual label text. And here we can set up to have an extra camera option. So you can see in this case, if we select camera one here, it'll actually affect on our video preview where it says CM1. This is a nice optional if you want to give the effect that you have multiple cameras in the actual array. In this case, I'm going to be setting it back to none. From this point, most people will probably be happy with the extra frame rate. We've added the black and white and the time code on the corner. But in this case, I'm going to be making some more adjustments to add some extra fine details. We're going to be coming back to our effects panel one more time. And this time we're going to be searching for the Venetian blinds effect. And this can be found under video effects, transition and Venetian blinds. In this case, there is two, the wipe version we're going to be ignoring. And you're going to be going for the transition one right here. We're going to be dragging this effect onto our timeline. And then we're going to be coming back to our effects control panel. And we're going to be looking for the Venetian blinds right here. Now, in this case, the transition completed, I'm going to set to 20% and you're going to see it's going to add these black bars right here. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is doing the transition completion. And what this transition does is actually create a black bar effect where it sweeps together in multiple sources. So you can see all these will collapse and combine together. 
In this case, we're going to be adjusting it to create an effect. It'll make more sense once we have the other effects set up here as well. The direction we're going to be setting to 90 degrees, which is going to make it horizontal across the screen, which is what I would recommend doing. The next thing we're going to be doing is setting the width to 5. In this case, the 20 is much too big for the scene, but 5 will add a nice happy medium here. And you can see it gives this nice kind of dashed effect along our video track. Mainly the width and the transition completion are the two things you can experiment with most. I wouldn't really recommend adding a feather here. It can create some weird softness along the video track. So I'd recommend leaving that. And then one final effect we're going to be doing to try take this to the next level. We're going to be coming back to our effects controls. And this time we're going to be searching for wave warp. This can be found under video effects, distort, and you'll see the effect here, wave warp. What we're going to be doing is dragging this onto our timeline and then you'll notice our video track is going to get completely messed up right away. Don't worry, we're going to be fixing this in a couple of seconds. So what we're going to be doing is coming back to our video effects again and we're going to be looking for the wave warp effect we've just added. Now the first thing we're going to be doing is leaving wave type on sin. You can experiment with this but I'd recommend leaving it alone. The wave type we're going to be turning all the way down to one which is going to completely reduce what we're doing right now. The wave width we're going to be leaving alone, although you can turn this up if you wish to make a more dashed effect. In this case, I'm happy with 40 as is. The direction I'm going to be turning to 15, which is going to create more of a diagonal effect. You can see we've got this nice dashed look, which you kind of get on surveillance cameras. And then finally, wave speed I'm going to be setting to 4. I recommend somewhere between 2 and 10, depending on your effect. But in this case, this gives a nice speed. Now what happens if we go back to the beginning of our track, if we click play, you can see we get this nice surveillance camera effect, the slight wobbling along the edges, which we get from the different effects. And overall, this gives a really nice surveillance feel. You can experiment then with the different sizing and direction to get the exact look and feel. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to create a surveillance camera effect in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, until next time as always, keep it saucy, peace.